Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Mount Zion Primitive Baptist Church, St. Petersburg, Florida. <coughs> Pastor Elder Dr. G. Greg Murray. My name is Sister Laura Hunt. I welcome you this morning. Let us pray. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, we come before you as humbly as we can. First of all, God, say thank you. Thank you. For keeping us. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for you just being God and being God all by yourself. We worship you today, oh Lord, name today. We pray for this nation and our government. And Lord God, we pray for the church of the living God. We pray for each and every ministry. Special prayer for Mount Zion today. Praying for our pastor as he recovers today. Lord God, continue to pray and lift up my mom. She is home right now, Mother Bella Patterson. So Lord God, lift it up Miss Dimple right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, Lord God, we pray. Yes, Lord. Pray for those who are grieving right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Pray, Lord God. Pray for healing. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. yes. Continue, Lord God, to cover Jackie Styles, the little yes, sin right now, Lord God, yes, Lord. in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. You, God, are a keeper. You still keep those. You keep us. You keep us. So now, Lord God, may the words of my mouth be the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in that sight. And Lord God, my prayer for this message today is that you're glorified. That you're glorified. Decrease Lord now, Lord God, so that the anointing would be and that the word comes forth with power, with power, grace, and mercy. In your darling Son, Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. 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 Today is Sunday, July 18th, 2021. 2021. Wow. Thank God. It's been two years since I've been getting calls to people asking about vacation Bible school mm -hmm. at Mount Zion. I'm so sad to say that no, we will not be having vacation Bible school this year. But we're going to trust God for 2022. Amen. Our lesson is talking about faith of Abraham. And we're in a unit number two of our study of faith and salvation that will continue starting in the first Sunday of July will go all the way to the first Sunday in August. But faith and salvation, and we're in the book of Romans, the faith of Abraham. Faith of Abraham. Paul added to the Christians, to the church in Rome, because they were asking questions about faith and works. And of course, the Jews were thinking that because of them knowing who Jesus, knowing about the Messiah and just knowing what God had intended, and because they were the chosen people, they thought they had an above every purpose for salvation. God was for the whole world to be saved. Mm -hmm. He wanted the whole world. Up to three, they ended up with a discussion about faith and works, thinking faith and works was hand in hand. And Paul, here in chapter 4 was opening it up to kind of like explain to them faith and works is a separate thing. You work because you are saved, not that it's a prerequisite for your salvation. We started out by opening up with, you know, with a man that was the patriarch of the Jews, and that is Edward. What then shall we say that Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh. We're going to start with Abraham. So according to the flesh, according to us in uniform, Abraham is the patriarch. But Abraham is just like the rest of us. He wasn't perfect. He wasn't a perfect man. Abraham had fault. Abraham lied. Abraham didn't always trust. Abraham still was minded in the flesh even when God had made promises to him. So Abraham, too, yielded to the flesh, just like we yield to the flesh. And I'm talking about our, our man, not our spiritual man, our physical man. 
you yield to that. He said, so that be the case, the only person you can boast to or talk about is God himself. But you can't do that before God. You can't do that before God. Because God, being the creator, is perfect in him and Jesus the Christ, being the son of God, is one who is perfect. So ain't no need for us to stop bragging about just how faithful you are just because you've been shouting up something. Mm -hmm. Of things going right for right now. Just boasting about you didn't do it. Mm, that's right. That's you didn't right. do that. So Paul says, so what does the scripture say? Verse 3, what does the scripture say about Abraham? He says, because what he's trying to do is educate those who are so wrapped up in following and thinking it's going to be based on the fact that you're under the umbrella of Abraham, that y'all all got included in what you call the salvation righteous plan. Mm -hmm. He said that's how that's that's not like it's not like insurance that you buy USA met like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we, there's no insurance plan for salvation. <laughs> but everybody everybody wanna fall up under what grandma's plan was like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> grandma will only teach your mom and dad will only teach you the way they can save you because they were not perfect. That's right. And they right. did not die for you. That's right, right, that's right. I don't care how holy they were. Well, mm -hmm. they could not make it right for you. That's right. True. So he says, well, let's search the scriptures. What? And it's always good to go back to the word. When people come at you with something, always go back to the word. Amen. Because it's the word that has the power, and it's the word that can validate itself. Glory to right. yes. yes. You're right. Because Jesus said, I come not to. Break the law, I kind of fulfill the law, but he said, because I am the word. Mm -hmm. So it validates it. So he said, what does the scripture say? He said, Abraham believed God. Well, how, how did he do that? Well, God took Abraham to Genesis chapter 12. Took him outside. And at the time, his name was Abraham. Took him outside and looked up at the sky. Can you count the number of stars? Just look up there. Now look, can you count? Because it begins to count. Because every time he thought he counted something, that another one popped up, he something, and this happened. Mm -hmm. He said, based on that, it's just how I'm going to bless you and your seed. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the time when Abraham was the age of 75. He ain't got no children. He don't have children. I know he ain't got no sound proper, <laughs> but that's what happened. He ain't had none. Uh -huh. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. But when God told him to look up, he said, Abram, that's what I'm going to bless you with. I'm going to make a nation come out of you. When he don't have kids, y'all hear me? There's no children because his wife was barren. I mean, she couldn't have children. Right, right. That's what they say. And here it is, he didn't even thought maybe his servant would be the one. No, God was saying, you, Abraham. Mm -hmm. And so when Abraham was in the presence of God and listening to God speak to him, Abraham simply believed God. See, that's what faith is. Just believe it. Just believe it. Amen. Even when you can't see it, just believe right. what God says. Not no preaching. No pastor, no deacon, no mother, not even a president. You have to believe what God says. Yes. And so by him believing God and taking God at his word, now he's going to fall to do some things. But I'm going to tell you how Abraham believed God. When God told Abraham, leave from up under your father and just go, he didn't question God where he was going. He just went. Abraham believed God. He said, go to where I tell you to go, and that's where you're going to be. Because I'm going to give you a land that's going to be all real. So I need you to get from around mm -hmm. your father and all of that evil stuff of worshiping idol that they're doing. Because, see, you worship me. So I need you to separate. And we're going to do that. I'm going to move you, and I'm just going to tell you to go. Oh. See, that's faith. Yes. Going without even knowing where you're going. That's right. Hallelujah. Can you trust God when he says, they just said you're going to be evicted, and God says, no, you're not. You're going to stay here. 
Or if God decides, let them evict you, I got a greater place in you. Right you have to believe God. And you can't see it right now. You might not have a job, but I don't know how that's possible. But with all things with God, it is possible. So you got to believe God. Yeah. Go to the doctor. Doctor gives you a report. Count you out. Stage four. That's what that means. You know, you can only live past that. But you got to, who you going to believe? That's right. Man or God. You have to believe God. And see, that's what Abraham did. So he went. Just like when God told him, you want to be blessed. He believed. You're going to be blessed. For those who are listening, those who are here in the sanctuary, you have to believe what God said, no matter what you see with your physical eyes. Amen. And stop trying to put restrictions and limitations on Jehovah God. All right, all right. Well, you know, I don't know. Ah, stop. The problem is you, you stop thinking what you don't know. You're absolutely right. You don't know. That's right. But God does. And when God says, be, be assured he is well able. And it was counted to him for righteousness. Because he believed what God said that was going to happen to his life, it was counted, means that he cha-ching, going into his account, righteousness. Mm -hmm. Meaning that he is not right with God. All because he believed what God said. And that's all God wants us to do today, is believe what he says. In his word. So he says, let's go to the scriptures. Now to him who works, verse 4 says, for him, for now to him who works, the wages are not counted as raised from the dead. Okay, everybody who got a job. When you go on your job and you work, you expect a paycheck. That's right. Right? right. That ain't no gift. That's right. 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 You don't consider that a gift. No, no. Even when you get bonuses, you don't consider that. You feel as though you earned that earned bonus. That right? Yes, yeah. I did. So that's what you get when you work for something. Mm -hmm. yeah. But a gift is a gift. Amen. Faith is a gift. Is a gift. Hallelujah. Work is something you earn. Mm. Right, right. And it's counted as a debt. Yeah. Because that's what you get. Mm -hmm. That's what you get. It's not counted as grace. What is grace? I'm going to break it simple. It's God's riches at Christ's expense. Oh, amen. That's grace. Amen. Works are not the same as faith. That's right. It's not the same. They ain't even on the same. Let's erase that. Because works cannot save you. That's right. I don't care how good you are. Mm -hmm. To everybody around, if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will take all your goodness straight to hell. All right. All right. Because it's not going to save you. That's right. It is your faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. You have to confess that. That is where your salvation is. God gives you grace when you don't deserve his grace or his mercy. Jesus Christ died when you didn't deserve it. That includes me in this. Now, but to him who does not work, meaning you don't count your work as your salvation, but believe on him who justifies the ungodly, y'all, that, that was all of us before him, okay? His faith is accounted for righteousness. Okay? His faith. God's having faith in Jesus. See, the goal and the purpose of faith is for you to believe and trust in Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. And we be counted as righteous based on our faith. That sounds so simple. Oh, we make it so complicated. <laughs> and that's what the Jews were doing to the Gentiles, just making it so complicated about it. Because, you know, you got to be like us. you got to do all the things and all the rituals that we did because we are the children of Abraham. But I got some news for y'all and us. 
we also are the seed of Abraham. So when God told Abraham, God blessed Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, and even once he changed his name in chapter 17, God told Abraham, mm -hmm. your seed will be blessed. Because he had some children other than the children that came from the promised seed of, of Isaac. Because we got our patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob. But Abraham had other children. Mm -hmm. His firstborn was Ishmael. Then he had other children from his marriage to Keturah. So there were others. And that's where the Gentile nations come from. So guess what? We too are the seed of Abraham. I feel like I should give somebody something right. to glorify and praise God for. Yes, amen, amen. We're blessed mm -hmm. because of our father Abraham's righteous being counted as righteous. Now, of course, then our apostle Paul, he shifts here and he goes to Bring up another well known person that the Jews like to talk about. That's King David. He says, just as David also described the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from the works. That means that he said he includes that, but it's also separate from your works. David talks about the joy of forgiveness and being righteous. David could talk. Sure, we say David was after was a man after God's own heart. That's the way God talks about in the Bible like that. But let me tell y'all about the other side of David. Mm. David was a liar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. David committed adultery. Mm -hmm. oh, no. And David was a murderer. Mm. My Lord. So these sins that this man after God's own heart. This David, he did, but God Thank you, Lord. forgives yes. all of our sins yes. when we confess and ask for forgiveness. First of all, he wants us to forgive ourselves. Thank you. But he wants us to acknowledge it first. Yes. Forgive ourselves. And, and, and sometimes it's so hard for us to forgive others when it includes others. But there's no no such thing as a little sin or a big sin. That's right. Sin is sin. sin. It's sin. Hallelujah. Now, if David did the ultimate of committing murder, mm -hmm. and God forgives, think about some of the things you've done in your past. Mm. And you know your past could be just yesterday, right? Yes, 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 yes. Some of y'all don't go all the way back and say, some of y'all did some stuff yesterday. Matter of fact, some of y'all got up this morning and did some things. <laughs> that you shouldn't have got done. That's right. That's right. My Lord. But God, the David said, there's such a joy mm. in being forgiven. See, that's what righteousness falls upon you. That you too can be forgiven from your sins. So he quotes something. That is found in Psalms 32, verses 1 and 2. He says, Blessed are those who lawless deeds are forgiven. Lord have mercy. <laughs> and those and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall impute sin. Mm -hmm. Meaning that the Lord can forgive sin. Mm -hmm. And you know, some sin that you don't think nobody know about. Mm -hmm. That it's only you, you can say it's just between me and God. But God forgives. It's between you and God. So God recognizes that you have sin. That's mm -hmm. right. Amen. That's right. You need to ask him to forgive you from your sin. Mm -hmm. David said, I did. He wrote Psalm 620. He said, Lord, I did. He said, you brought it to me. He said, I, I recognize me and I realize I need to ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I need to recognize I was unworthy. But God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. But God. Thank mm -hmm. you. But God. Thank you. Who is faithful and just mm. to forgive us of our sins? Not the preacher, mm -hmm. not even me as a teacher, mm -hmm. not even a deacon, steward, an elder, anybody. But God is the only one who can forgive sin. And David is saying, I know what he has done because I know what he's done for me in my life. Well, I'm the same way. I know what he is capable of doing because I know the sins that he's forgiven of my life. Mm -hmm. 
And don't let nobody tell you that God won't forgive something that you've done, no matter how bad you may That's think right. it is. All you got to do is go to him for forgiveness. And he will. Do I because he's well able? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He he's will. well able to do. Mm. Now, when you talk about David and you talk about Abraham, he's still on the faith of Abraham because they're still in their mind that they were still greater than the Gentiles, that they were still better than. You know, you got people, and you know, in the church, you got the same issue. People who've been here for a long time mm -hmm. thinking that they're better than. Okay, uh -huh. come in. We should right. be better than the rest of our brother. We should be embracing our brother and taking them in. That's right. To assist our brother, mm -hmm. to lift up our brother, to encourage our brother. That's right. That's what we should do. I don't care how many years you've been here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. Come on. That's Sometimes right. you try to brace them, they don't want to be embraced. Yes. That's right. They don't want to be embraced. So, right. you what do you do? What do you do? Pray for them. You continue to lift them up in prayer. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Because somebody prayed for you. Yes, That's sure right. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you wouldn't embrace. Thank and when you would not accept. We've all been stuck. We've all been there. Yeah. Because we all didn't see ourselves that way. That's right. Come mm -hmm. on. Just my old age preaching. Oh, they sure must be preaching for the church. But I was up. I was up. Who's for you? What? What's for you, too? That's right. Everybody. Praise God. Everybody. Everybody. Because the word yeah. that goes forth mm -hmm. has power. The word that goes forth has power. Yes, it does. Has power. Now, this is where they said, well, because we are the Jews and because we got the first and we know everything, and this is how the Christian Jews were thinking, they even had to have a council back in Acts chapter 15 and 17, fifth chapter 15 and 17, that council. They said, well, okay, because they was trying to impart upon them circumcision. So here it is, verse 9. Does this blessedness then come upon the circumcised only? Circumcised meaning the Jews. Mm -hmm. Does God only bless the Jews only? No. Or upon the uncircumcised also? That's the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. That's all right. For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. Mm -hmm. We didn't say anything about this circumcision. That's right. We didn't say anything about this work. And it says faith was he got credit in his account for his faith. So no matter how things work, you can still rely on your faith. faith. Even though sometimes we may waver and may get weak, we still got our faith. Because why? Because our faith goes all the way up into having faith in Jesus Christ. That's right, yeah. No matter how weak he, we may be. Never weak. Never. Thank you. Lord. He's never weak. Thank you. Well then, it says, how then was it accounted? How then did he get credit? How then was it counted for us? Why he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Mm. And see, for the Jews, that that the circumcision was an outward show. Mm -hmm. It's an outward show. Yeah. Just like, thank you, Holy Spirit. The baptism for us is an outward show mm -hmm. for all. That's right. Okay? Right. But it says he was counted righteous before he was circumcised. Mm -hmm. See, to for all Jews, the circumcision and circumcision for male only. Mm -hmm. Male. You know, other cultures and females. But we're talking about the Jewish couple here. Mm -hmm. When God promised that Abraham believed, he was already, Genesis chapter 12, counted as righteous. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 17 is when the circumcision came into play. Before he was the father of the Jews, he was the father of all. So I think about by the scholars. If he was counted as righteous before, and God promised him to be, there will be many nations come forth from you, princesses, princesses, prince and princesses, kings, leaders that will come forth from your seed. He was giving them credit because he 
believed what God said, mm -hmm. even before God called him out to be the father of the Jews, he was already blessing him for the whole world to come forth to him. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Yes, and so what the Jews were thinking is that, okay, upon the circumcision, because we are special, ain't nothing wrong with them being special, ain't nothing wrong with them being the light, because God wanted that particular nation to, to be a light for all other nations. But at the same time, God's ultimate goal was to save all mankind. All right, now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's saying that he says he was counted righteous before he was circumcised. Mm. Before he became Abraham, mm -hmm. the father of many nations, he was Abram who was counted as righteous. Go back and read the scriptures. Go back and read. So the circumcision for the males was an outward sign. Now, there are some people who don't want to get into all that stuff because can you imagine at the age that they did this? This is the age of 99. Now, when the first guy, God gave a promise, and he believed he was 75, now he's 99. This is before Isaac is born. And they had to cut off the male foreskin on the male penis. Mm -hmm. that's, okay? right. that's, that's right. circumcision. That's right. Now they do it when the baby, male child, not let me make sure I clarify that, male that's child, right. uh -huh. for the eight days old. Okay? They do that. Yeah. Okay? But then they did it. So a lot of other people say, well, I don't, that's what the con controversy was. Are you trying to make the Gentiles do this, obey this particular law? In order for salvation, mm -hmm. Peter said that the council back in and the book of Acts, he said, No, we, we can't put them, put the joke on them when we ourselves ain't obeying all the rest of the laws. Right. All right. See, the law, the Mosaic law, was only there, it put in place to show you just how much you needed Jesus. And it shows where we failed in the law. But I'm quite sure if you look at some of the laws on the books of our government, we have failed a lot of the laws. Mm -hmm. That we've broken, we just ain't in jail of all of them. All right, 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 all right. So then it says, and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had while still uncircumcised, mm -hmm. that he might be the father of all those who believe. So Paul was educating them. He became the father of the righteous. Before he became the father of the Jews, mm. though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. <coughs> that was just the circumcision was just an outward sign and seal that demonstrated one's belief and trust. Just like baptism demonstrates for people that we are now trusting and believing who Jesus Christ is. Hurry up, because I'm right out of time here. <laughs> and the father of circumcision to those who, do, who, who not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of faith, which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. Mm. Paul is trying to get one thing across to each and every one. And I want, if you get nothing else out of the lesson, the focus of your faith should always be on Christ. Yeah. Because the origin of your faith mm -hmm. is Christ. Mm -hmm. The belief of your faith, Christ. When you're weak in your faith, Christ. Where he, where we may be weak, mm -hmm. he is great. Where we may fall, he will pick us up. Why? Because he is able. Yes, to do that. I tell you, our Lord and Savior is well able. Mm -hmm. So the faith of Abraham includes all of the world. All we have to do is believe in Jesus Christ. And we too will be counted as righteous. And it's so good to be able to go to court. And I'm talking about in the spiritual court here. And you look at all of the things that you've done and you've seen. And then the judge, who is God, is getting ready to bring forth a verdict over your life.
But then it stands up in the defense counselor. The only one that you needed is the lawyer, is Jesus. Stands and he says to his father, the price has already been paid. Amen. And then Jesus, God himself, gets the gavel and says, you are free. Mm. Praise, Praise God. Start living just like you are free. Oh. Praise God. Based on your faith and trust in Jesus the Christ. Amen. May God bless each and every one of you on this day. Take this word, let it go forth, and let's continue to pray for one another. Amen. Because the church needs prayer. Yes, Lord. The believers need prayer. Thank you. I need prayer. Amen. I need prayer. Me too. Thank you. Thank you. May God bless you on this day. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you. Amen.